Je ne fais pas juste venir le saisir comme ça. I eat here. Je le frappe quand je viens le saisir. And I don't just hold when I knee. I pull. Et je ne vais pas juste le tenir lorsque je balance un coup de genou. Je le tire vers moi. So your first low line. Attach. One, two. He will take a half step, give you a target. Attach. Now elbow. One, two. Again here. My name is Lee Morrison. I'm a self-protection combatives instructor. I work the international seminar circuit, uh, so all over the world. I'm here in uh, Paris teaching a seminar for two days for some of my students here in France. My background in terms of martial arts began when I was 11 years old, when I started with traditional karate. Then I went to uh, Judo and Aikido. I stayed with traditional karate till I was 17, was then graded up to about third dan. I studied Wodaru, Shotokan, Kyokushinkai. Then around this time I went to boxing, where I uh, kind of learned the reality of what it felt like to get hit, as well as deliver a shot. Uh, since then in my life I've trained in uh, Japanese, Okinawan, Filipino, Yeah, Malaysian, Indonesian, Chinese, many, many martial art. And towards the uh, latter part of my martial study, I started to train in um, combatives, Western combatives, which were influenced by military. Around this time, during the 90s, it was when uh, more reality-based methods of self-defense were coming in, where many people were coming to conclusions of that most of the majority of the martial arts doesn't work because it's trained and taught with compliancy and as soon as you throw compliancy away most of it falls apart. There is also the need to address the psychological elements of fear and adrenaline and how you deal with this under stress and how it can affect your skill set. In terms of martial study I've been fortunate enough to train with some of the best people in the world but the majority of my experience come from life from, from the, the experiences I've had dealing with violent confrontation in my life. I left school and home when I was 13 years old. I was a street kid. I was involved with uh, street violence in gangs. I was associated to people involved in football violence. So it was very common at an early age that I saw how violence worked and I understood predatory behavior. 21 years old, I went to work as a nightclub doorman. Um, during this time I worked there for 14 years in the south of England, in London, Portsmouth and Southampton. Some of the places I worked were extremely rough and testing. I would say it's one of the biggest character x-rays I ever had in my life. During this time I learned what worked and what didn't work in a martial sense and the conclusions I came to come down to being very simple. The first is on a psychological level. If you have to deal with violence, the first thing you need to get right is your head. You have to understand there'll be a severe emotional response that you need to learn to control if you've got any chance of controlling anybody else. The other thing I learned is that you know, people really only treat you how you let them. So on, a, on an emotional level, if you treat people with respect, then most of the time you'll get respect back. But quite often people mistake kindness for weakness and these kind of people you have to educate. So during the, the time in terms of what I found to work physical was uh, most of the physical skills taught in martial arts as long as they're impactive and you learn to hit hard, hard enough to disrupt somebody's ability to fight via taking their consciousness will work for you. But the, the main key dynamic that works the majority of the time as everybody in this business agrees is if you do something before the other guy does something. So a preemptive response. This isn't always possible, but it certainly should be primary as it offers you the highest probability of success for dealing with violence. In 1999, while still active as a doorman and still training in all over the world, I formed a, a club which was initially developed just for my ability to have students so I could test stuff. Uh, eventually, this was given the name Urban Combatives and uh, it went from what was just supposed to be a small group of guys testing and training to uh, a larger thing. 
it became uh, a regular class. I was still active training everywhere and wherever I went, everybody wanted me to demonstrate uh, you know, certain things. So I ended up teaching quite a lot on a seminar role. Well, combatives, there's a, a sense, first of all, you need to define what does it mean, combatives. Combatives is not an art, it's not a, a system, it's not a sport. Combative, if you look in the dictionary, the word combative means somebody who is argumentative and willing to fight. Or you might say the place is combative, this is a dangerous place. So combative basically means violent and potentially dangerous. The word combatives with an S on the end is not in the dictionary. It's a modern word coined by the modern self-protection fraternity and it's come to mean the use of any uh, principle, tactic, skill set or way of thinking that has proved itself reliably under real fight conditions to work. So if it's proved itself to work under real fight stress, uh, fight stress is when adrenaline is present, you are disorientated, confused, maybe there's pain, maybe there's fear. Under such conditions, your body's ability to function normally is diminished. Your ability to cognitively think and make decisions is diminished. So under such conditions, you find out that most complex, fine motor skill that you often see in martial art does not work here. Not for the average person. So the, in terms of the skill set, the movements in combat is a very gross motor, very simple, very impactive. So large motor movements that are easy to learn, easy to retain under stress. But the main thing about combatives is it's principle driven. It's not uh, technical driven. So many martial arts are focused too much on technique, which has to be a specific way. So they set it in a box. And if you're dealing with a situation outside the confines of the box, it falls apart. Whereas combatives as principle based are adaptable. The primary thing is based around personal security. So having a good observation of your environment, uh, a degree of relaxed awareness when you are out and about. But the awareness by itself isn't enough. You know, you have to recognize what you see. So having an understanding of pre-threat cue behavior, know how predatory behavior works. I think the big advantage that I have for this from growing up was that I've been both sides of this coin. I've been uh, on the receiving end of predatory behavior and I've delivered predatory behavior. Quite early in my life I came to a crossroads where I had to make a decision you know, to continue on the bad path where I was or do something good with what I was doing. So I decided to do something good and I started to train and study and uh, then eventually start to teach. But combatives as a given is a, 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 a method of principle-based um, elements that are geared towards first avoidance, seeing the problem. Because the greatest resource that you have for self-protection is target denial. If you're not there, then you can't be selected. And if you have good awareness and a good uh, understanding of pre-threat cue behavior, you could possibly avoid up to 95% of any potential problem that you're likely to face. For those that you can't avoid or maybe work in an environment where you can't leave, the doors being one such example, or if you find yourself in a physical situation where you can't avoid this situation or de-escalate and there's a need for the use of physical force, then the principle primarily is to be proactive, as I said before. The thing about combatives is you have a big umbrella and under this umbrella you have traditional martial arts, combat sport. Then you have self-defense that you might practice at your local leisure center which maybe teaches you how to break away from somebody holding your wrist. It's a very low level stuff. Then you have so-called reality-based self-defense of which there's some good and like any other field there's some rubbish. You have to sort the wheat from the chaff. And then finally, at the end, you have combatives. Combatives are at the extreme end of the self-protection scale, and they're geared primarily for dealing with real threat to life, so worst case scenario. They were born um, from the biggest test of all, military. So most military, most combatives come from a military background. One. Right. Listen up. Control the man. Vous contrôlez le man. 
for military. Encore une fois pour les militaires. You would literally screw his head off. Vous allez euh, dévisser la tête. Ah, c'est plus létal. Twist his fucking head off. Ah, lui, lui. And slam him on the floor. Il va arracher la tête et lui exploser au sol. Pour yes. les militaires. Military. Pour les militaires. This is not military. Là, on n'est pas militaire. So control. So here I clinch and I knee. Then I reach. I rotate and I control. Push and here. Or here. To bring his head to me. So from here, bam, I do this. Then I do. Now I rotate. Do you understand? No problem. Bring the mountain to Muhammad. <laughs> understand? Ramener la montagne à Mohamed. Let's try it. You have civilian self-protection or civilian combatives, which is what I teach in the main. So 80% of what I teach is for civilians. And of course, it has to be adapted for civilians uh, in terms of the rules of engagement. And it has to um, work on a force to threat parallel because understand that anything you do in a physical sense, there's going to be a need to communicate what you, why you did what you did to maybe a police officer or in a court of law. So we have to work within the force to threat parallel disparity. But still, even in that, combatives are geared for worst possible case scenarios, so where there is a real threat to life. So the person has a knife and you are unarmed. There are two or three people against one person, a strong aggressive male against a smaller woman this kind of thing. So combatives as a sense is understood as an extreme thing. It's trained where the level of force is up to 10 if there was a violence volume dial. So we train for the worst event. But people misunderstand it when they see it on uh, YouTube or when they see clips, they think it's extreme. We train for the extreme, but that's not how you deal with every situation. You know, it, it would be tapered and diluted down to employ a level of force that meets the threat so you can do what's necessary and reasonable and no more. So a big part of what we teach is pre-confrontation, understanding how you will feel during the build-up of a possible conflict, recognizing the potential pre-threat precursors that give you a criteria that gives you the need to be preemptive. Then you have in-fight or in-conflict. This is the physical part. So this is the part where you know you need to use your physical dynamic. And just as important afterwards is the post-event or post-conflict. So you understand how to uh, put your brain back into a higher level of thinking. So once the confrontation is finished, you can make a logical decision. Because under fight stress, you're not logical. The cognitive part of your brain is no longer functioning. And how you would uh, drive a car without crashing it, give your friend first aid, get your girlfriend to safety, talk to a police officer without incriminating yourself, etc., etc. So combatives is really the only thing that considers all three phases of conflict, before, during and after. I don't have any relationship with traditional martial arts now. I find that everything that I studied in my life gave me something whether it was discipline, whether it was a mentality, a way of thinking, a way of training. But my experience with martial arts, particularly um, traditional, are that they don't figure in my uh, self-protection curriculum. There's a big vast disparity between the dojo and the street, and there's a big void. And combatives, particularly when it's pressure tested and scenario trained, tends to bring the two together somewhat. Um, but if you look at my curriculum, I mean, in, in a physical sense, the tools employed, palm and elbow and knee, you'll find these things in all martial methods. In combat sport, you'll find them in martial art. But other than that, that's where the similarity probably ends. Uh, well, there is, there's no, I like the Japanese theme. Um, on my arm here, there's, there's three components, which is um, spirit, awareness and strength. These are the three elements, I think, that make for the peaceful warrior. So the whole, the whole idea is there's a, a balance, because there's no front without a back. As, as violent as I can be, my capability can be, I can be equally compassionate. So there is a yin and a yang to it, there's a balance. I think uh, that anyone who has had adversity in their life appreciate good when good is around, you know? So the, the, it's not 
it's nothing confrontational. I like the samurai theme and that. The other side is tribal. And on my leg, I have a Polynesian, just because I like the art. But um, other than that, there's no real there's meaning. It's not gang related. There's nothing like that. Yes! 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 Yes!